Here is an example of some of the castles around Wales. How many can you identify? Flint Castle, situated right on the estuary mouth. Rudland Castle, standing proud above the River Clwyd. And Denby Castle, a mighty fortress in the heart of Denbyshire. And Conway Castle, one of our favourites to visit. And this is what today's lesson will be on. Conway Castle, a magnificent medieval fortress, still towers over the town after 700 years. Thanks to restored spiral staircases in its great towers, you can walk a complete circuit around the battlements of Conway Castle. We highly recommend it. This is one of the most magnificent medieval fortresses in Europe. In the distance rise the craggy mountains of Snowdonia and spread out below you are in the harbour and narrow streets of Conway, still protected by an unbroken 1,400 yards ring of town walls. It's enough to take the breath away, especially when you consider that King Edward I and his architect, Master James of St George, built both castle and its walls in a barely believable four years between 1283 and 1287. Conway takes its place alongside Edward's other great castles of Beaumaris, Harlech and Carnarvon as a world heritage site. This famous fortress is exceptionally well preserved. It contains the most intact set of medieval royal apartments in Wales. The high curtain wall and eight lofty towers rise almost as impressively as when they were built more than 700 years ago. So don't be afraid to climb those staircases, if you can, for the full Conway experience. There isn't a better place in Britain to stand on the battlements and dream. Up next is a short video all about Conway Castle. Enjoy. in the late 13th century by Edward I is an immense fortress taking the form of eight huge towers connected by massive walls enclosing two courtyards. Constructed on the northwest coast of Wales to subdue rebellious Welsh princes, the site is mesmerising, with hills rising to the south and west. The castle itself is built directly onto exposed bedrock. This was designed to stop besiegers tunnelling beneath Conway's walls, a common tactic in medieval siege warfare. The entrance was situated on the northwestern corner of the castle. The remains of a stone ramp which led to a gate high in the wall can be seen here. This ramp was connected to the castle itself by means of a drawbridge. Once across the drawbridge, any would-be attacker faced a narrow passageway between high walls which leads to an outer courtyard, which houses the main gate. This was overlooked by towers soaring above, which gave the defenders a supreme advantage. The arch was defended by several wooden gates and a portcullis, a metal grid which dropped from above. The fortress itself was divided into two main courtyards. The outer yard, roughly rectangular in shape, was once a hive of activity, with the remains of stables and kitchens along its northern walls. The most impressive feature of this outer courtyard is the Great Hall which runs along the southern wall. The roof of this huge chamber was once supported by five stone arches, only one of which survives today. On its western end, the remains of what was once the chapel can be identified in the Great Hall from the unique windows. At the far end of the courtyard, a steep wall rises, blocking access to the remainder of the castle beyond. Access can only be gained through this heavily protected narrow arch. Unwelcome attackers had to pass over the narrow stone causeway with drops on either side. They then had to cross a drawbridge, now replaced by a wooden platform on the right of the picture. Inside this gate lay the royal apartments built for Edward I and his descendants. This included the king's own chambers and this small hall 
where he could receive visitors. The towers surrounding these apartments contain numerous rooms and chambers as well, the most impressive of which is this private chapel. There is also another kitchen with its own baking ovens. The walls of the castle are topped with accessible walkways which overlook the courtyards below, while a whirl of passageways, corridors and staircases weave through their immense width. While they built this impressive fortification, Edward I's engineers also constructed a fortified town in the shadow of the Grey Castle. Over 700 years old, the town walls are still in immaculate condition today. They run for 1.3 kilometres, rising and falling over the hill on which the town is built. Inside the walls, there are several surviving buildings from the Middle Ages, such as St. Mary's Church and Aber Conway House. If you want to see more history videos like this, check out my new What facts can you find out about Conway Castle for your next visit there? Take care guys, see you soon.